Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Brave Man Studios, and I want to show you remote procedure calls. So, uh, what remote procedure calls are, are basically, it's the ability to call a function across everybody that's connected that has that class that can call that function. So, uh, let's say that we had a function to jump. I can do a remote procedure call, jump, and everybody will call the jump method. So we're just going to go straight into it. I'm going to go into my scripts here and I'm going to create a C sharp script. I'll call it ball because I'm going to put it on the uh, sphere. I'll open it up. And first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be using beardedmanstudios.network. Second thing is I'm going to derive from the simple networked mono behavior. If you don't know what the difference is between the simple networked mono behavior and the networked mono behavior, I have a video that goes over that. Uh, otherwise, a high overview is the simple networked mono behavior is basically made purely for RPC based classes, and the networked mono behavior is more for real time uh, variables updating. So, to create a uh, method that is a remote procedure call, you'll put these brackets. These, this, is, this is an attribute. We're going to put BRPC for Bearded RPC uh, or Bearded Man Studios. Uh, so uh, we're going to do a private void move ball vector three direction and transform dot position plus equals direction. That's all we're going to do with this method. Now I'm going to make it so that when I press the space bar, it's going to call this method across the network. So protected override, and we're going to override the base update method. And what we're going to say is if input dot get key down key code dot space. So if we press the space bar, RPC. Now RPC is a built-in method to the uh, simple networked mono behavior. So what RPC takes is the first argument is the method name that we're going to call across the network, and the consecutive arm arguments after that are the arguments to that method that we're calling. So I'm going to copy move ball, paste it in there as the string name, and then it's going to be params object array. So I can just pass in my next thing. So new vector 3 and we'll do 0.35f, uh, we'll do 1.2f, and we'll do two, negative 2.32f, just some random numbers. Now before I continue, I'm going to say that if I had more than one argument, let's say I had an int in here, I would just put a comma after this argument and put in my integer value. So it would be the first argument maps to the first argument, and the second argument maps to the second argument. Here, in, uh, they map one to one. So I don't need that, so I'll get rid of it. So with this, I will save, and we'll see it working across the network. So I'll jump back into Unity. I'll select the sphere. I will add the ball script to it, and then I'll build and run as game. I'm using my Forge Quick Start menu for this. So I'm going to display on monitor one. Let's snap Unity over here so I can see both. And let's go to the menu. Save that. All right, so I'm going to be the server over here and the client over here. So if I come to the server or the client, I can press spacebar, and you'll see that it called the method across the network, and now the ball is moving each time I press the spacebar. So that's how you can do a remote procedure call across the network, and that's what it is. And I will just go into a little bit, a little bit more in depth in the remote procedure call. Uh, if you're used to Unity's remote procedure calls, you will remember that there is an option to do an RPC mode. So I can say the network receivers, and I can say all receive it, all includes me, all buffered, all will do uh, everybody including me and buffered. So if somebody joins the network session, they will. this method will be called for them with these arguments. Others, that's everyone except me. Others buffered, that's everyone except me and anyone that joins uh, will get this method call. And then server, which is just the server will execute this, nobody else. So currently the default is all, so everybody gets it. Uh, 
if I wanted to like spawn let's say a vehicle which we'll go into in a different tutorial I would say all buffered because if somebody joins in after me I want them to have my vehicle in their scene if I did just all then it would be everybody that's in the scene right now but nobody else even the people that join after so uh, this will give us the same results this uh, current line that I have right now and of course if this had more arguments I would just consecutively add them after that so if you have any questions let us know uh, until next time I'll talk to you later